Yes, we would take off from the swing at the top of the arc yeah, and fly, fly like like a squirrel. Yeah. Wait. I always call it, I call, yeah. on, I call myself Evo Canigro. <laughs> because we would, yeah, we would swing off and jump off and just see how far oh, we could fly. Go. We would swing so hard, sometimes the bottom of the swing would lift up Yo, off the ground. Oh, yeah. Er, ee, er, and we're just yeah, like, yeah, yep. Like, this is fine. We would fly off the swing and do backflips. Yep. Off the swing, mm -hmm. insane. Then, remember the one? It was like you thought that you could time travel if you were able to go all the way. Over yeah, 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 over yeah, 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 yeah. But like, bro, you should talk about that on your. I'm gonna, a, gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Do a bit of that, man. I'm like gonna do it. Swing like taking off at the highest point. Like yeah. it was the dumbest thing you could possibly do. That's all we wanted to do. That's all we wanted to do, bro. I was like, break this body I just got. <laughs> like I just. Hilarious. Fresh out the factory. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Club Retro. You know what it is. Download, blah, blah, blah. I told all your friends, yada, yada, yada. I'm very, very pleased right now because I have a very good friend of mine. We go way back. Way back. He's been doing comedy longer than me, and I've been doing comedy for a long time. So when I was looking to get into comedy, <laughs> I was like, let me scour the field and see what's going on in these New York comedy streets. And I particularly wanted to see what other black comedians was doing the damn thing. And this guy's face would pop up. And I was like, Jordan Carlos. Lo and behold, I'd get to work with him on several projects. Several. And we'd become uh, very good buddies. Jordan Carlos. Hey, man. Thank Charles McBee, thank you for thank you for the opportunity and thank you for um, wearing something very similar, <laughs> literally dark jeans. You notice I don't even have my glasses. I could put the glasses on just so we put them just... on to complete the look. All Who right, cares? Let's do it. Yeah, that's right. Unimposing black man. That's we right. Here. <laughs> where did I where did I put it? Where did I put these? Oh, this, see, this is sad because you don't have your glasses. And as a nope. spectacle man, oh, you got your case. Okay, I got him. All right, okay, well done. Well Those done. Night. Wait, holy shit! Do we have the exact same frame? Shaboing boing. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I got a hat. I got a hat too, but I don't want to get too hot in here. No, no, I understand, man. Um, <laughs> this is too much, bro. This you know, is too, us in the mirror, like literally, like, you know what? The same fucking guy. <laughs> Where is my hat? Can we occupy the same space at the same time? I don't think we can. Let's get Baron Vaughn in here too. <laughs> Let's just go and complete and take it all the way, man. I don't think we can. Baron Von, Keegan, Michael Key. All and right. Rest. Oh, wow. Boom. There we go. All right. Pick your black friend. Listen, we're who, here for you. Who? Okay, so in the bas in the basketball game, pick up basketball game, who do you want? <laughs> who are you going for? Who, who are you going for? Who you got, baby? I'm definitely, I'm not a star. I'm definitely the the, the two guard, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed the ball uh -huh. around. I'm not going to showboat. I definitely am a four, four touches, and then we put it in the basket. I'm all defense. All right. I can get low. I can squat. You know it. All right, what about you, Charles? My, you my, the my jump shot is pure. <laughs> my, my jump shot is clean as That's a board of hell. That's why you don't want him. The, the outside <laughs> game is different from the inside yeah, game. Yeah, it's clean the as a board of hell. Is different. Listen, yeah. we're both in our 40s. I'm not doing no nothing crazy. I'm not driving to the basket. I'm not getting no rebounds. But I will, I'll dish it out, and, I, and that jump shot is pure. So I'm just letting you know. It's up to you. It's, it's up, up to y'all. <laughs> just tell us in the comments. Tell us in the comments. Hey, uh, all right. So da Dallas? Texas. What part of Texas? That, you got it right. Dallas, Texas. All right. right. 80s. What, what would you say your era? 80s, early 90s? I'm a zillennial, so it expands. I mean, so I was born in 78. Hold your applause. <laughs> and so, like, I go all the way 80s, 90s, hard into the 2000s into now. But, like, yeah. um, I, was, I was awake and... Um, definitely alert for all of it because I had an older brother who's four years older. So I like back in the day, like kids had to know everything. Yeah, you had to know everything front, back, side to side. You had to know what your parents were into, their yeah. music, and you had to understand like what um, an older sibling was into as well as your own. So, so like I kept up. I kept up with with everything. Yeah, yeah. Ask me anything, bro. Let's go. You was outside. <laughs> I was, truly. <laughs> in Texas, you had to be. You had to be <laughs> just on horses, literally. Yes, yes. Or you could overheat in your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of your house, what describe your crib. Not like living room specifically, because I feel like everybody, when you think nostalgia, you think growing up, you think like that living room was something. Bro. It was a certain look. What was the couch looking like? What was the TV Ooh, situation? Take me back. 
What was what's going on? We get the living room and the family room. That, the oh, the there, we yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. There we go. You know, you was moving. Yeah. You, you, somebody was doing pretty, pre- pretty good. <laughs> Somebody's parents was doing pretty they were good. Doing all right, man. They're doing all right. They they came up out and and my parents. Uh, you know the neighborhood we grew up in. When I watched ET, I was like, is that my neighborhood? Ah, okay. Because I mean, a lot of movies back in the day had to do with the suburbs. It was right. all about the suburbs. Right. Home Alone. E.T., they all had to do, like, because they knew Americans were out there. Right. And that's, like, the aspirational thing. So so we lived out there, so I kind of, like, resonated with those stories. Now, to answer your question, we had the family room in the living room. You did not go into the living room at, at all. all. That was at for who? Point. That was for guests that never came. And not your all. guests. Yeah, not my guests. <laughs> Absolutely not my guests. My your, work. your raggedy ass <laughs> friends take their ass in the living room or in the basement. Yes, where can we play? Where yeah. can we play? Now, in Texas, we didn't have basements, although we okay. needed them the most. Right. We needed them the most. Why? Because we had tornadoes. Did we have ah. flooding? No. It didn't matter. You didn't have to even have a finished right. basement, Charles. Right. You know, it's the kind of great, bright ideas that come out of Texas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just, just one of the many bright ideas that come out of Texas. Please. Right. So y'all just hiding in tubs. Just like, hope. <laughs> Absolutely. Hope, no. <laughs> hope the ceiling don't cave in. <laughs> we'll see what it do. <laughs> just you in the foster, uh, foster tub. <laughs> Just trying to, to make it. I, I, I always had this dream yeah. that I'd be spinning in a tub one day in a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> also, Lisa, yeah. also Wicked Witch of the West type shit. Just like. Truly. truly. Wow. Yeah, All right, yeah. cool. So you had the, so the, the living room. Was, mm-hmm. the li- was the family room like white sofa? Like, wh- no, but my parents like... were smart enough to understand. Now, at a certain age, they switched up. We went to Gabbard's. Oh, ah. Okay, this is not a plug for Gabbard's. I think it's still in operation. It's right off of 635. All right, now, uh, <laughs> now at the beginning, we had kind of like this, ooh, it was like a hard 70s woven yeah. type of cloth give it, it to was, me it was it was on some woolish type of type of stuff it was um it was rags yeah man. yeah it was tough it yeah. was it went tough it went hard and i remember there was it was um it had like wood along the side right so it had like wood piping and you bet your ass i still remember teething on that thing. <laughs> on that thing, son. <laughs> Still tastes good. There's a certain <laughs> parts in the house that we definitely, like, as a kid, just like a wild beast, we just left our mark on. I guarantee you, you grow up to, you go yeah. to the house that I grew up in, there's got to be some mist piss stain somewhere that oh, yeah. somebody just just never saw. I was just like, yep, that was me. That's me. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, I mean, my parents, so, like, we moved a couple times. It was almost like my dad had warrants. But every two, <laughs> three years, because it was, it was America back then. It was mm-hmm. just like, you know, you were trying to get up the ladder, and my dad was like, we've got a bigger house, got a bigger house, mm-hmm. got a bigger house. And this last, uh, the second to last house that we lived in as when I was a kid, I remember um, I had like a transformer gun, mm. and it was uh, Optimus's gun, and my brother had done something to me, and I threw the gun at him. Oh. You know, like a knife. Like yes. your knife throw. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. stuck into the wood paneling of the wall. Ooh. And then my brother had me. He's like, I got you. Ooh, and your like, daddy's gotcha. foot was about to be <laughs> stuck in the paneling of your ass, my brother. Ooh. Broke off. Just give my dad a That's reason. like when a commercial break. It's like, yeah. bang, and then the commercial hits. And you're just like, oh, Truly. shit. Just give my father a reason for this. Oh, season. my God. My dad was God. always like, he come home stressed out. He's just like, have they done anything wrong? Because I will kill them. Oh, all. my just God. Just let me out the let me out the pen, Hazel. Let me out the pen. Oh, my God. So what happened was my brother was like, I got you. And he shifted a shelf over. And he was like, but I know about this. I know. (laughs) (laughs) So I was forever in his debt until we moved, the day we moved. So we move. And uh, now it's like, now it's like the eighth grade going into the ninth. Yeah. Now my parents are a little more chill. You know, it's, it's like they've calmed down a little bit and we're going in this new house that they love. It's their dream house. We move that shelf and my dad goes, what the hell hell is that? And then I was like, I don't know. Maybe right. some people before us. Right, maybe right. Like, maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I was like, what does that Jordan Peele mean? Woo! I was just like, do, 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 do. <laughs> crisis averted, bro. Your bro still has that over you to this day, though. Oh yeah, he it's knows still, the truth. He truth. Still, still the truth. to this and day. Now we all know. Yeah. Like, he knows the real truth. 
And Hilarious. You know, it was like, for a moment, man, it was like my life just flashed in front of me. Oh, my God. He was good, too, with the bob and weave. Yeah. I mean, now yeah. he's 50. He can't, yeah, right. can't possibly do that. Can't bob or weave. <laughs> Nothing. But he was, in one minute, he was oh. there, and you had you had him center of mass. I had him dead to rights. And then he just, boop, bam. It's so like whoa. in a cartoon where it, yes. you bit down, it's like, bang, 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 It was just, it was so bad. And we were latchkey kids, yeah. so my, my parents were gone. You know what I mean? So it was just yeah. like, it was just Lord of the Flies. Yep. Man. Damn. <sighs> yeah, man. You're taking me back, bro. You take me, you, you are raising my cortisol levels right now. I'm getting stressed out. That, <laughs> that is what this pod is all about. Yeah. It's not about nostalgia. It's about bringing back old trauma and using it for my personal enjoyment. Let me tell you, yeah. that is behind me, but it is. it feels like it's right behind me. <laughs> That's how it feels, bro. That's how it feels. Oh, man. All right. You and your brother, did you guys sleep in the same room or separate rooms? For a time, we slept in the same room. Like, we started bunks? off. No, never bunks. We, oh, that would have been amazing. But there was enough space where it was like he was on one side, I was on the other side. And we would just have, like, all the Lego Wars and yeah. the, and the yeah, Star yeah, yeah, Wars yeah, yeah. Wars, just the action figure wars. There were chores to do on Saturday, strip your bed, things like that. So we had to, get, you know, I, I he would send me like a gopher underneath the uh, fitted sheet to get all bump out all the corners, bop, 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 bop. Nice. So that was like that was our mo. We got along really well in the room. We never Good. really fought about anything. Then the then the then then the girl came. Oh wait, hold on one second, because I just want to make sure. You know when you're doing it all on your own, yes. you want to make sure. Okay. Truly, yep. truly. All right. Then the girl had the audacity to come. Yes, she came, and then. And how much? How what's the age difference? You and your brother? Uh, four years. Okay, four, yeah, four that's a proper. Years. Yeah, that's like freshman. Senior, yeah, it's a whole. Mm-hmm. In in kid years, that's a whole generation. Whole generation. Whole yeah. generation. You're you're accountable for so much. This person is just like on the mountaintop, like yeah. a Sherpa. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Understands so much, right? So we had four glorious years, and then we then they uh, then they expanded. They had an expansion team, uh, <laughs> and then the girl came, and I remember that. Uh, when my sister was coming, my mom went and, like, she did things that I had never seen done before. Yeah. She's painted the room, painted, like, yeah. like got got the, yeah. a bureau, and, like, she she uh, she painted that pink. And, like, I was like, what is all this fuss, <laughs> right? But my sister had her own room always, uh-huh. always, and I had to learn to share. And so that was kind of the difference between us. But, like, my brother and me... We were like buds. Yeah. We were definitely buds. And then when we moved to ultimately to this other house that had one, two, three, four bedrooms, everybody got their own bedroom. Okay. And so that was like it was like he was over the garage. He was oh, the over the garage. He was over the garage. Oh, he had a car. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't even know the guy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, who like, are you? <laughs> Who are you? Couldn't knock anymore. You know what I'm nope. saying? Like, 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 he was just like, what? Nope, nope, nope. The, the surliness nope. came on. Had that like, bass in his voice. It was oof. a whole different ball game. It was rough, man. It nice. Was rough. Yeah. All right, so your room growing up. Take me there. My room growing up, I was, you know, I was a, I was a special boy. Yeah. I was yeah. artistic. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, they didn't know, they, they couldn't handle this much beta energy in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was like, my mom who... I know, I know. She was, she was, she was ready to hold space, like to see if I was gay or not. She was, she was ready. She was, ready. She was She's like, like, "Listen, I love you, no matter what. Uh, you're my son. You're my special little boy. Anytime and, you yeah. want to like tell me what's on your heart, I'm here. So like, for instance, yeah. I noticed I was the only one to do this. My mom took me to the wallpaper store and was like, "You pick out any wallpaper." you want any any border that looks good to you oh you want the one with the with the black horses uh, the, 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 is like that black, is that speak to you does that speak to you okay does that speak to you listen that side of you that more delicate side of you she's so, having conversations yeah. with your dad just like look <laughs> no matter what happens you are going to love him no matter what that was i mean that was as cl- I, I just i remember that i'm like why is that in my head so yeah. much and I think my mom truly was holding space yeah. for one of us. You know, it was the, the 80s into the 90s was like culture was changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. My mom comes from rural Mississippi. And she and Dallas was different in that, like, it was kind of like an open city. Like, anybody could be whatever they were going to be. Yeah. And I think she was kind of, like, trying to rise to that uh, yeah. to that occasion and, and kind of meet that, that moment. And, um, and, and listen... 
My room was great. Yeah. My, I had a closet it was with a mirror. <laughs> you know how they remember the doors, the yeah, sliding doors yeah, with the yeah, mirror? Yeah. Bro, the full length. The full length, my G. Plus, I had a place for all my stuffed animals over there, too, man. <laughs> yeah. What stuffed animals? Uh, I had I had Teddy. Uh, Teddy Ruxpin? Uh, I didn't have Teddy Ruxpin. Oh, Teddy, Ruxpin. Ju- Teddy Ruxpin was like, what, by the time, I really wanted a Teddy yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted it, but it was a rich kid toy. Ah. I, and my dad was like, you can't have this rich kid toy. Right. There's a tape in the back. You ain't getting that. But my cousins had it. And I was like, see, we can't have nothing in this family, right? Yeah. So they had that. And then, but my Teddy was just like a very much, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like an airport. Everybody had it. It was an airport purchase. My dad like got it from the airport. On Yo, the that home. was your best friend, man. Coming yeah. out that Teddy. But Everybody you know had, had the bro. Teddy. You know what he had? He had the Velcro hands, man. Ah. The Velcro hands now. The, uh, that, that blew my mind. So me and Teddy. Hilarious. Every night had a little stuffing coming out of his out of his butt behind. He was he was a good good bear. I had another bear who was like a, a replacement, not really a replacement, but like okay, he's also on the bench. Okay, but he he burned his ass on a lamp, and so I wasn't feeling him that much. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He burned his ass on a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't gotten to the accountability phase yet. <laughs> He walked his ass over there and burnt his he ass on the lamp. and burned his ass on the lamp. So my room was like that. <laughs> then, of course, he had the Dallas Cowboys poster, right? He had the Tony Dorsett of it all, the Boom. Herschel Walker. <laughs> back, when, back when that was okay. Shout out to Herschel Walker. Walker. <laughs> you know, I, who I met. Who I met in the third grade. Met, uh, met young Herschel, uh, fresh out of uh, UGA. He was like, like, you can be anything you want to be. That is a, that is a very good impression. That's a, that's a, he nailed the essence. Hey. He had to read to us. He had to read Cat in the Hat. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? He had to read Cat in the Hat to us. And uh, it Fun fact, not... that's the highest yeah. reading level he's ever gotten. I will try to dig this up. But there's a picture of me sitting on Herschel Walker's lap in the third grade after I won this drawing contest where he, like, oh. he, he, he had to read the Cat in the Hat. And that was a big, that was, oh. that was big for him. That was really big for him. Oh my God, uh, Herschel was—he was having fun. Yeah, he was having fun. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's <laughs> not good at public speaking." <laughs> <laughs> he seems really nervous. Oh man, he seems really nervous. I think this guy gets hit in the head a little too too much. Too much. Too much. So yeah, man, that was my room. I had a, my room was like on a long hallway. We had a nice. It was it was good. We you know it, my my dad had been he was doing well at that point. My dad had he came from nothing. Yeah, and he and like. It was like his family had money, then they lost money, then he had money. Yeah. And so, like, we were on a long hallway with a courtyard in the middle. I was like, I know people don't live like yeah. this. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. And we are a couple yeah. of cul de sac Negroes. I will, <laughs> we are, that is what we are. We're colored, we're happy, and we're singing, and we're brothers. And our parents had money. But they and, were quick to, sh- to tell me. No, of course, they, they worked very money. hard. We you did not, have, did not money. have money. They were quick to tell us that. Yeah. And so, um, uh, anyway, the, 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 the house is just very 90s. It had like a giant fireplace that was painted white. Everything was like white brick. Mm. And like my mom had like, she wanted to be in touch with her black feminine side. So she had to poster from um, For Colored Girls Who mm-hmm. Considered Suicide mm-hmm. when, when the Rainbow Was Not Enough. That was above the piano. And it was nice. Bro. Piano. Did you hear that? Piano. It was a, it was a happy. It was a happy. It was shoved on the wall. It hey was man. Like a grand piano. Listen, man. listen. What? What? Listen. What? We can't. We can't be out here prospering. I thought this was a safe space. It is a safe space. I'm congratulating. <laughs> I'm saying don't downplay it. <laughs> I'm saying don't don't downplay it. But we, we were, had the Casio. But no matter how, listen. You could you could put black folks. Out, uh, you could take them out the hood, but we still have some hoodish ways. Like my oh, yeah? the dog. Don't tell me the dog was tied to the tree outside. Yes! Oh, no! In Texas. In Texas. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That's right. A cocker spaniel. Tied to a cocker uh, spaniel. A cocker spaniel. Oh, no. Can you imagine 2024, the idea? Dogs don't even know. I was just talking to, with Yamanika about this. Dogs don't even know what outside is nowadays. Are you kidding me? The concept of a dog house doesn't even exist. You know what the dog house is now? Your yes. house. Your house. <laughs> yes. What? Uh, we treated my cocker spaniel like a damn blue My nose. grandparents like had a the dog nose, outside. Yeah. Like a blue nose. It was like, <laughs> like why did we treat it? Yo, dogs had it rough yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was bad, but like, um, but we loved the dog. We loved the dog. And 
Yeah, we've come a long way as a people. <laughs> <laughs> in one generation with dogs. In one generation. You know, I'm not... We don't get... Black folks don't, don't get, get no credit. credit. We, have, we have progressed when it comes to... We used to get that by wild... Do- by, by dogs. Yeah. By police dogs. But now, look at us. Look at the, us. The same ones that would bite us, we take into our homes. <laughs> we rescue them. You feel me? We rescue them, okay? That's how compassionate we are as That's, a people. As a people. Despite it, we haven't turned our back. Nope. Have not turned our back on, on dogs. dogs. Nope. Have, never. Nope. Never. That's yeah, it. but like that was, um, we had that going on. There was even a little, I mean, Texas is wild, bro. Yeah. We haven't, we even had like in our, on our street, we had, in front of our house, there was like a little motor pool. So it's like you drive up, like the driveway mm. went like around, but the garage is in the back on a hill. Ah, oh, fuck, it was great. It's great, man. No pool, though. No pool. We nope. were we were still middle class. No pool. No pool. No in, pool in yet. In Texas. Um, yet. Yeah. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I want to kind of go now to uh, like high school. Oh, shit. What was, what was please, that? Please don't. What was the vibe in high school? Was it predominantly white, predominantly black, Hispanic? Look at me. Ah! Look at me. Ah! What about, what about me? <laughs> Why would you ask that question? That is such a loaded question. <laughs> Was it predominantly white? Yes. Predominantly Hispanic? <laughs> Whoa. Because my last name? Is that what it is? That's why they took us. They were like, we got a two for here. We got a two for here. A Carlos and a black Carlos? Come on. Get your, get your, oh, get your head in here. Um, uh, yes, it was quite white. It was quite white. I went to a K through 12. Woo, kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. I was like, I was the only <laughs> black kid in my class for a few years. And then uh, a, a young lady came along. She was fantastic. Shout out to her. I loved her. Um, and everybody was like, y'all should kiss. Y'all should kiss. <laughs> oh, shit. But she was very beautiful. And I was like, yeah, yeah. it was we, like one of those like, we, should, like, we but, should, but kiss. the reason that y'all are yeah. trying to get us to kiss is fucked up. Fucked up. But yes. she is hot and yes. I want to kiss her. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, but in high school, by the time I got to high school, uh, another uh, black person had come to the class. Uh, sorry to say your name. You could probably edit that out. But he was really cool. He was like, uh, he was a scholar athlete. He was amazing. And you had to be. Yeah. Like the way when I got into kindergarten, yeah, yeah. it was just like you had to test in, but I made like a snowman. Yeah. And like and they were like, look at this guy. Yeah, like, oh, snowman. Brilliant. They're they gonna pay full. Yep. There's no scholarship needed. Right this way. And could you just take a picture on the brochure for us? <laughs> could you just be on the brochure for us, please, so we don't get sued by the NAACP? Thank you so much. So anyway, uh, uh yeah, in high school, high school the vibe was like, I got a car, I got um not new. Got the Honda, yeah. 1987. Proper, Honda. proper first yeah. car, Honda. Yeah, my dad's old 1987 Honda LX had 100,000 miles on it. No AC in Texas. Wow. We Man. rolling dirty. Get some Freon. <laughs> Would you get a job? You can get Freon. Oh, my God. Dad, please. Freon. Wow. So in, Texas, in Texas, bro. Yeah. Texas. Windows down. Just me and the devil rolling. Oh, my Just God. Me and the devil rolling. It was, dude, I, I, I sometimes would like, I, I would hallucinate. Yeah. It was that <laughs> Yeah, high. yeah, yeah. It was that There high. is no cooling off. No. There is no like, all right, I'm going to get in, let the world of windows down, let the, let the, no, there's no cooling, cooling off. off. There's no cooling off. It's just, you probably know from Ohio summers. I'm Ohio sure summers like, were yeah. hot, but we yeah. had, I had Freon. We had, <laughs> my first car had Freon. I will say. My dad was spiteful towards his children because they had things he didn't. Mm. So he's like, I'm gonna you give gonna you earn it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you the car. Ain't gonna be no free on it. Right. There's right. always gonna be some <laughs> level of you're gonna have to earn this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, me being lazy, I did have a job, but uh, I didn't that didn't translate into me getting right. free on right. my car. It's like no. No. Uh, stupid me. All right, so but what was it was like nine oh two one oh. It was definitely like nine oh two one oh. Um it was seven five two four eight. It was yeah. They were rich kids. They had big houses. There were parties that I seldomly went to. Yeah, it yeah. was like you knew a good time was happening over the hill. Yeah. You know? So I, it was just me and my my friends who were, we understood that we were dorks in our school, but like we at least understood that like we'd do summer programs, be here, there, and like people in other mm-hmm. places were like, oh, no, you're cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we, we just, we gotcha. understood that like I always had the benefit of understanding that my brother who was cool in his high school. I go to his high school and it was like, it was like the witness protection program. People yeah, yeah, didn't know yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I, 
I knew that there was another world. Yeah. But that other world, but the world that I was in most of the time was starter jackets, was, I'm, I'm talking about. What team? Obviously, Dallas. You were in Dallas. So yeah, Dallas yeah, yeah, but it wasn't always cool to wear Dallas stuff. I okay. Mean, so you're talking about, like, uh, people would wear Notre Dame, North Carolina, North, uh, yeah, Michigan. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, those those were the. Those um, were the ones. Yeah. And I was, I never even thought of those as college options. Right. Just like, right. I just knew of them. My brother had, like, a, an H.U. Bison um, starter jacket that he got for me, mm-hmm. which was like, people were like, what is that? That's exotic. Yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So um, it was good to have a fresh starter, but I wore my starter a lot in the house because I was scared of. It was the 90s? <laughs> 90s was wild. You, you had, listen, 90s was wild. You could get your start, your starter, cap, jacket, J's off your feet. Yep. It, it was coming. Thank it, you, it, Jeff Bezos. Honestly, for this one thing. Yeah. For having uh, ample supply of things, yeah. that, that way you, you could get whatever you wanted with the click of a button, right? right? Not with the click of a gun. Right. All right, so it was like, that was a real thing. You just worry about like going to movie theaters and looking too fresh. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. look too fresh in the night. Yeah, yeah. Too fresh? You're going to have to come up out them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was a target on your back. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, yeah. we did that, and... Um, Umbro shorts, sambas. Uh, a lot of white boys had the uh, butt cut, haircut. Um, uh, yeah, the uh, not Jonathan Taylor Thomas, but his brother. <laughs> Brad. Brad. The Brad. Who's been going through it? Yeah, Who's yeah. been going through Brad it? Brad was going through it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then as far as haircuts were concerned, that's when we started working on, like, that was the first time I ever went to the barbershop and asked for what my dad called the college. The Travis club. Kelsey? No, I'm the just Travis. Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> the knife. The knife. The knife. The knife. Well, back in the day, they called it the college cut. Mm. I'm that old. They called it the college cut because in the 1960s, guys were calling it the college cut. So, uh, so that's what my dad said. He's like, "Well, you're trying to get the college cut." I was like, I was "Like, okay, like, okay, whatever that so is." So I asked the barber. He's like, "You mean the Caesar?" So yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, the yeah. F- first time like I'd gotten a Caesar. And then um, my first experience with like waves and things like that. Yeah, didn't know yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. learn about that. It was just like, it was a time of like, I mean, you Man. wanted those Wanye waves. You wanted waves like Wanye. Um, you wanted a good edge up. Good yeah, I mean, the do. Can we just can we just talk about the do rag yes. situation? Do, do, were you wave cap or do rag? I was. Uh, here's the thing about me. <laughs> oh God. My family. I have Creole in my family. So. Uh huh. Never, so it didn't take I much. Never, I never needed a whip. You didn't have, yeah, okay. I never needed I just right. needed a horse brush. <laughs> I just needed to stay soft for on a horse brush. All right? Maybe you all don't know about that. That's other black people dr- <laughs> fainting in the background, if you didn't hear that. If you didn't hear that. That's the one thing I got from my dad. Uh, got them waves out. <laughs> got them waves out. Meanwhile, the rest of us got this big dent go- crease going across our face. It's about to sever our damn head off. <laughs> I had people scalping, literally scalping our scalp. Like, what is that dent in your head? Tying a do-rag. Eyes rolled in the back of our head. Before, Unbelievable. Now, before 23andMe, before Ancestry.com, people would just say, you got Indian in you your family. You got Indian in your, in your family. family. You got Indian in your family. You got long arm. Yep. You got Indian in your family. You yep. red bone. What, red, what's going on? What's going on? What's people going would on? lie. I got Indian in my family. Ain't oh, yeah. bit of Indian in your family. <laughs> you got Kunta I, in your family. I actually do have Choctaw in my family. I've seen the photo <laughs> of my great-great-grandmother, Ari. Shout out to the Choctaw Nation. But like, but because of it, everybody has high check cheekbones, and and on my mom mom's side, like <laughs> a different grain of hair, which is not good hair. Oh, okay, uh-huh. it's not good hair. As soon as you he turns his camera, as soon as I turn his mics off, yo, it's good ass hair. <laughs> I, I ain't need no, I ain't, I, ain't, I need a horse brush. This moment brought to you by Colonialism. <laughs> All right, but but but. Um, it was, but I learned, what I learned was that like, cause back in the day, like, okay, so early eighties, yeah. I remember the first time my mom was like, she took us, she cut our, our little half rows cause we had half rows. You'd have to get box braids every night to, to make sure that the afro was, was right. Yeah. Okay. And then my mom, I guess in 89, I remember this is right after she saw school days. So it's like 88. Yeah. She's like, you are getting a high top fade. Ah. So she took us all to get fades. And I was like, I don't like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Neh. you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. That, uh, clippers, like you had to get used to. I cried. It was my first uh, haircut. And then it was like, it was like the evolution of, uh, of man. Then we went to the Caesar. Now yeah. we have stayed in the Caesar 
for a long time. Long time. Well, Caesar has been the longest going black haircut. I'm the ear to stand on this. Yeah. Longest haircut ever. From yeah. early 90s to now, that's 30 years. There is, yeah, yeah. It's still riding high. I had years. the, uh, like the, I, I called it the Warren G back in the day. Like the high, the fade, the ball fade. That was me. <laughs> ball fade. Yeah. Then I went to the Caesar. Had a little bit of a boosy fade at one point. Sure. And then, uh, and then, yeah, but yeah, but it's, we the, it's basically the basically same. Basically the same, thing. yeah. And then, but they ask you, and it's like they're always like, "Do you want it a one?" Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're just like, that's when it comes down to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when it's on you. And then maybe a line, something mm-hmm. like that. It's it's crispy a moment. line. Had, it's, had that crispy line up more. It's a moment. Now in the '90s, it was so important to go every single week to the barber shop. Yep. Every single week. That's, that's when haircuts was like six dollars though. <laughs> <laughs> It was like six dollars for a haircut. Back I know then. They, I, barbers were not respecting themselves. Back then. They were not. Respecting barbers them. did not know they were in the nineties. <laughs> now, forget about it. You can't get a barber to wake up out the bed for less than sixty dollars. But that, but back in the nineties, listen. Also, if we could talk about the amount of smoking as you're cutting my hair oh, and, my the, God. and the nails, men with just like barbers. My barbers back then had long. Nails. Yeah. I don't know what it was. They just had long nails and and gold, a lot of gold rings. Yeah, and yeah. they would just clinch up on your head like this. And I was like, "Is this? Like, this can't be what good for is my happening. head." Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, our barbers back when I was a kid, they were old. They were a little bit like oh. older, so they would have the barber chairs, but they would also have like a little makeshift salon. <laughs> they would have like the hair dryers in there. So every now and then. Women would come in and get like their hair mm-hmm. rolled up and done, so it'd be like you you would smell. Oh, so every so often it would be a mix between dead hair. D- yeah, you just smell dead hair sometimes. It was a now, lot going on. What you don't know, and let me just share this with you. Yeah. But um, one of my good friends growing up was uh, I was I was friends with the Cottrell family, mm. and they owned Prolac. Uh, so in the Proline hair, yeah. hair hair products, yeah. which were which were then lampooned in um, in Coming to America. So they were the soul. Glow they were the family. soul glow. They were the soul glow. They were getting some scratch off that. I got. To- <laughs> or no, it was lampoon. Maybe they, it was just comedic. I don't think I don't think Comer ever made money off of it. But I'll tell you what, it was cool being friends with the Cottrells. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, had yeah. the juiciest curls, <laughs> the the best textures. And you got to go to the cow. They had box seats at the Cowboys. Oh, like it was nice, crazy. He nice. was the man in Dallas. They nice. were. He was a black prince. You know. I mean, w- was it a little greasy? <laughs> yes, it was a little greasy. Little, little like that scene in Coming to America. You get off the couch. It's just like a black, <laughs> just a black stain right there. Grew up with it, man. Aaron Cottrell. Shout out to you, bro. That's what's up. Shout out to Aaron yeah, Cottrell. Just let your soul glow. All right. Um, if there's a these real quick song that would define your Oh my god! Era the back era. then. Now, there was a song my mom would let me play. Now I was a big, I was the king of New Jack Swing. Okay. Okay. Now I was Teddy New, Riley. Yeah. Oh, Teddy Riley, Boys to Men. You know, Motown yep. Philly. Motown. They're, they're telling you exactly what their sound is. Right. Which I thought was so genius. Yep. Motown Philly back again. Not too hard. Not, not too, soft. too soft. You know, it's long overdue. But yeah. now Philly's swinging. You know, and and I was like, thank you, thank you for telling me who you are thank in this you. song. So I can you know? like, yeah, I can yeah, process, process this. this. Yeah. So New Jack Swing was was great for me, um, and uh, R and B was awesome, and I was I was like heavy into into groups like Jodeci, yeah, yeah, um, heavy into uh, you know Shy, because yeah. my brother was going through it, my brother uh, was yeah, going yeah, through yeah, it, so yeah. I was listening to the music he was listening to. Only thing that was missing for me was a girl. Um, I, could, <laughs> I had the feelings. I had you the feels. feels. I had the feels. You girls. had the feels. I had you just all had a girl. I just I was missing one piece. Yep. Uh, uh, so uh. like uh, my the one that the clincher for me was "Soon as I Get Home" by Faith Evans. Now back then you had yep. that, not only the, the, the song have to be right, right. But the video had the to video be right had too. to be right too. Yep. Video had to be right. So sophomore year that one comes out, and uh, so that that video comes out. It's and it's just her. I remember. Driving home or being driven home, yeah. So I guess the notorious B.I.G. Yeah, in a Bentley as the rain's falling, it was the be- it was like Hype Williams yep. at Hype his Williams. finest hour. Hype Williams, and I was like, that is what I want. The Spielberg of ghetto <laughs> musical cinema. 
Hype Williams. Hype Williams. With the bubble lens. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was great. The layering. The layering, you know the saying? colors, the everything. Yeah, it came together in belly. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that, so that song was just like, I would just listen to it on repeat all the time, bro. All the time. Lance, you, you, were, were, yeah. you were a hopeless romantic hopeless. back then. Oh, my God. I was always surprising girls. that would be like, I'm way into you. They'd be like, that is so surprising. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, a kind way of letting me know. Being, being like, oh, my God, I had no idea. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, time to go. <laughs> I Hilarious. brought you to Shakespeare in the Park. <laughs> I brought you to Romeo and Juliet. Now you tell I just you. thought we were. I yeah. thought you just liked uh, that's the park. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what <laughs> <laughs> friends take you to dinner for free. <laughs> Friends take you to the Mavericks game. That is, but that is the lesson that you learn of you can't friend your way in. But that's the lesson that your your brother should have schooled you on that. Back he should have, but he was also hopeless. also he hopeless romance. See, he was also taking girls oh to like <laughs> Shakespeare at the park and being like, I don't understand. How does she not know that I'm madly in love with her? He was Mr. Flowers, Mr. Chocolate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah, was yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, we all the rom coms of the era. Yeah, knew yeah, him yeah. By heart. So yeah. I was totally messed up. Yeah, yeah. Totally messed up. Uh, when Harry Met Sally, yeah. Love Jones, great, great. Uh, all, all all the greats. Like my brother would play them on repeat. He said, she said, like it, um, the night we never met. Like I thought, I thought love had to be some kind of interesting game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like people the, were the like, meet cute, the whole thing. <laughs> people were like, if the, I just stand outside of her window with a boombox and <laughs> profess my love, <laughs> surely she will. <laughs> How could it not work out? How could it not? How, How could it not, not work out? How could she not want to meet me at the top of the Empire State Building <laughs> after my wife dies? <laughs> I tell Hanks. <laughs> I'm in the ninth grade taking this shit in. <laughs> I'm like, and that <laughs> is love. That is love. <laughs> what do you mean? Yo, I tried to. I remember one time. Oh, God. Man, I'm going to tell you a vibe. One time, uh, th- uh, this one girl hooked me up with her friend. At interview with a vampire. We went to interview with a oh, vampire. Shit. Yeah. I was 13 years old. Go to interview with a vampire. And she was like, so and so's into you. I was like, great. We just start making out for the whole I don't even know how to kiss somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making out with her face, yeah. kissing her, kissing her nose. It was like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. We're just going at it. It was, I was like, yeah, I did that to you. Like the whole movie. Two hours of me just <laughs> sucking on her like a goddamn octopus. <laughs> and then I was like, Katie at, what's up, Katie? Yeah. <laughs> Katie, I followed up, and I was like, I was like, is there going to be another date? And she was like, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Bro, I was uh, broken. You thought you was handling business. Goodness. Standing on business. <laughs> so she was like, how long is this movie? Damn. I, I was hungry for her face. Oh, it was my God. Awful. Oh, my God. It was awful. All right. Um, if there was a TV character that at the time you could have switched places with, easily it was probably Carlton Banks. Carlton Banks was like, uh, for me, I was like, I feel seen. I feel seen yeah. finally. Yeah. Because Carlton, obviously, and let, a shout out to, uh, to Alfonso Rivera. Yeah. Never slapped anybody during a award show. Did <laughs> so much heavy lifting. He's, so much heavy lifting. He did. You know, he really did. He doesn't get the credit he deserves. Does not get the credit he deserves had a dance did the carlton yeah. dance people people weren't watching for the will smith dance yeah 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 carlton understood that he had to sing for his supper on that show mm-hmm. to make himself relevant mm-hmm. yet he was such a classic foil mm-hmm. you know and and what i loved about alfonso rivera was he was he had already done that before mm-hmm. Not only had he been in the like the Pepsi commercial from that time when yep. I was a kid, he Silver played the Spoons. Silver Spoons is what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's where he really made his hay, where Ricky Schroeder was like, I'm just cute and dumb and white. Yeah. And like, and so yep. Alfonso was like, man. Here I'm we go. <laughs> Tap dance kid. Here we go. Talent. Yeah. No, Talent. seriously. He also watching his character develop Talent. over time because mm-hmm. he was very just like the straight kind of just boring. Boring, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And just watching him just add layers and layers and layers and layers over the years. And it was, yeah, you know, he, he was really brilliant at that. Also, um, I love the fact, speaking of being seen, I love the fact that Carlton Banks never apologized mm. for who he was. No, no, no. no. He never apologized. Yeah. He never tried to be anything other than himself unapologetically. Because I say that because you see that a lot. You know, I'm sure you've seen it where it's just like 
you could have brothers standing there, Harvard graduate or whatever, mm -hmm. just you know, educated whatnot, but will try to conform to Comport, yeah. some bullshit. And it's like no, they should be trying to ascend, trying to ascend to you. But for yeah. some reason, we you know associate cool or associate you know leveling up with other you know some ignorant shit. Absolutely. And with that, it was cool to see somebody that was just. Funny, but unapologetically him and never tried to fit in. Even when they had the very special episodes <laughs> of him trying to pledge. Right. And and they were like, nah, you act white or whatever. And he said what he said. Like, all that yeah. kind of stuff, I really appreciate it. So Absolutely. See, that was the difference between between him and Urkel. See, Urkel, at the end, Stefan, what, what is happening? Right, you know what right. What is happening? Right. We have jumped the shark. The Steve Stefan, the machine that would make right. him the Stefan. It's like they literally went out of space one time. They yeah. time traveled. It was a whole thing. <laughs> what happened to Ricky? It was Bruce Lee. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to Ricky? Remember Little Ricky? Little Ricky. Little Ricky was on and off that show. Had a, had a, had some juicy curls though. Very juicy, juicy curls. curls. They might have went to your family, your your peeps in in Dallas to get them curls. I thought he was just a young member of DeBarge. Debar yeah. I didn't know what was going on. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, that that was um, who I identified with the most when I was watching TV as a kid. That's and, cool. And like. Yeah, that was my character, man. I was like, and he I, he made me kind of wanted to get into comedy. I was like, I want to be funny like that. I want to do those things. I want to kind of like save the scene. I yeah. want to be the 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 um, comic relief in a comedy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that was what I wanted to do, man. Fresh Prince, well, absolutely one of my all-time favorite. Oh. Just brilliant through and through. Um, crush, back then. Celebrity crush oh my back God. in the day. Don't get me started. Yeah. Nia Long. Nia Long for sure. Can't go uh, wrong. Nia Can't Long go wrong with Nia Long. Saw her first, of course, in Boys in the Hood. Yep. And ever since then, it's been, too, it was like Boys in the Hood, then uh, Love Jones. And I was just like, um, and then I just saw her last week after after her man had done her dirty. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, it, uh, I was I was in Brooklyn and she was at brunch and I was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's, I mean, you're back at the movies all over yeah, again. I was with my wife, but I was just like, oh, there's so much. <laughs> can, I, can I make out with your face? Can I make out with your forehead and kiss your nose? Yes. Like, I've learned so much. <laughs> like, interview with a vampire style. Like, um, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, in Boys in the Hood, man, Mia Long is, she like, she's so, she's the girl next door. Girl, but yeah, then, yeah. And of course, they, they hook up, and I'm like, oh my God, should I be watching this? Nah, you know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But then in Love Jones, she's like, Love Jones, which, by the way, like, Lorenz Tate was low-key stalking the shit out of her, and, like, that was really creepy. There's a lot of movies <laughs> that we can go back to back now and go, actually, that's not okay. That's not okay. Love and Basketball? Toxic. What happened? It just, first of all, the movie starts out. They love basketball. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, the way he, he treats her like shit the entire film. And okay. she's just like, I just love you. I just want to be here for you no matter what. He's like, fuck you, bitch. Until he gets injured. And he's like, all right, well, I can't play basketball anymore. How about you? <laughs> you up now. You take care of me for the rest of my life. How about right, that? Right, that part. How about we do that? Damn, that's, I mean, that was like Mo Better Blues. Like, Mo Better yeah, Blues, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah, treating yeah. ladies badly, and then he gets smashed with his own trumpet, and then like, and he's like, like you, know right. you know what? We you know what, Spike Lee's sister? Let's, let's, let's work this out. Let's work this out. <laughs> I haven't done one kind thing this whole time. Nope, but now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Now yeah. the tables are turned. You're, oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, for me, there was something about her. She just, it was just like. Yeah. I mean, her eyes, and just like. Uh, oh, the way she talked and like it, it. She was just cool, man. She was just really cool. Also in Fresh Prince, played for uh, Will Smith's yes. girlfriend. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. For a while, and they lived. Didn't they live in the guest house? In the guest house, in the pool house. In the pool house. Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of like an uncertain thing. Yeah. Because they weren't married. Yeah. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Uncle Phil was kind of cool with it. You know, <laughs> he was just like whatever. Yeah. And New Aunt Viv was cool with it as well. Yo, the Aunt Viv swap. Uh, shout harsh. out to Daphne Reed, but you know, I mean, <laughs> come on, come on, yo. We know what it is. Dark man, skin it's a harsh and, business. Dark skin and Viv, yo. Dark skin and Viv forever, man. Forever. That dance that she did, remember oh, she was in the dance for, class? Forget it. Yeah. Forget about it. She was like, this is my show. Yeah. This is my show. Yeah. You know what I just learned about that show? That it was actually pitched to De La Soul. De La Soul. It was, was also a, pitched yeah. to Kid and Play. Oh, they should have taken As that. Well. They should have taken that. 
I think it was yeah. actually supposed to be, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been swapped because they were going to do Fresh Prince and maybe Fresh Prince Jaggy Jeff was going to do like House Party. Oh my God. Because I heard Kid tell the story on like Glad TV or something like that. Or, or Play tell the story on Glad wow. TV. Yeah, it was some universe where that was a possibility. Yeah, definitely. And Because uh, Will Smith back in, I mean like, DJ Jesse Jeff and the Fresh Prince, I mean, all respect, but they weren't like, they weren't, and, and neither was Kid and Play. Kid and Play had like a song or two, but they weren't like, I remember they weren't mega famous. And yeah, they were, they were like, still, we're yeah. still growing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, we could do other things, but like, shout out to like Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah yeah. knew like, okay, this isn't going to last forever. I need to really jump into this acting thing, you know, yeah, set man. it off. Uh, living single, living single, all that, all you know? it, and all now it. she's equalized. She equalized the whole thing, bro. Equalize Level it, it out. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Just her and Denzel played the big role in Chicago, like Queen Latifah. Uh, yep, yep. Should have done it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, tech, technolo- is there? Do you remember technological advance Absolutely. that blew your mind? Blew my mind at, at a certain age where you were like, "What is this?" Okay, there were two. And they, they were both the computer. First, we had a Commodore. What's up? Hey. Uh, back in the day, Lionel we had a Richie. Commodore. Yeah. <laughs> we had a Commodore around 1982. My dad got that. It did absolutely nothing. Yeah. But we were we were like astounded by like the colors and the shapes and the yeah. things that you could do. The pr- you were doing like code. You were doing basic yeah. code on the computer. And you would make the mouse do this or make the mouse do that. And they're like, isn't this great? And you're like, you're like okay. Like, yes, yep. it is. And then, and then like, Every once in a while, it would glitch out, and we're like, the Russians. We just think it was the Russians <laughs> hacking into the computer. That was our big thing. And then, like, so we didn't have a computer for a while. After that, we got rid of it. The Commodore was gone. So, like, 1987 rolls around. This is five years without the computer. Yeah. Five years. That's a long Five years time without a home without computer. A- but that was the 80s. Right. No one had a No one, yeah. It wasn't like you knew you were missing anything. Yeah. You, you gotta, and you could function in life without a computer back then because the computer was electric. Easily. We had a, we had an IBM typewriter, which my mom uh, always did, you know, typed up her stuff on. And then, um, so I had to learn about that. And that was the computer, was the typewriter. Yeah. That was the computer. And you would write your papers on a typewriter. Right. And then 1987 came along and my dad got the Apple II GS. Mm-hmm. And everything changed. A little something called clip art. You ever heard of it? <laughs> little something called clip art, little, little printer. I'm yeah. Like, I feel so bad for my dad. He never got on that thing. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Thanks, Pops. This is yeah. ours now. This is ours now. We yeah. have the floppy 3.5. Floppy. The yo, floppy. Yo. The it was floppy. Yo. Crazy. Crazy. Man, I remember floppies could take down, according to, <laughs> according to 90s and 80s action movies, a floppy disk <laughs> could bring down an entire government. If you locked or unlocked it. If you, yeah, yeah, if you remember to lock it. <laughs> Scan this, baby? I mean, oh, come on now. Oh, my God. I would just always, you had that metal part, and you just like, click, 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 click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. All the time. Oh, that, man. And the whole paper saved on that. Was very serious about my discs. Um, and uh, my grades actually improved with the computer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Because yeah. That, was, that came at the same time that you were supposed to start writing papers. So it was like, I was like, you know, I love the, the blinking cursor. You could add things to it. Mm-hmm. I was cool with like, because I was a very graphic kid. So, you know, you're doing projects. We had a color printer, my G. Oh, y'all. My dad would go crazy. Man, He'd be like, listen, if y'all Negroes don't stop Stop printing. wasting <laughs> my, bro. We had a color printer and I was on every site I wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> printing out everything I had no business printing out. Slow as hell. I'm like, is that an eyebrow? The nose? Come on. And then, yeah. and then I would hang. This was college. I had them plastic no. all no. over my wall. No. Oh, college was a fun time. Now, I have to say, I remember this so well. Like printing out things. Yeah. Like my mom was like, do it tonight. <laughs> Don't you do it in the morning when we got to go. Because yeah, the yeah. print job would be like, it would take 10 minutes Woo! for a three page paper. Woo! It was like, and then don't let, don't let it get jammed. Don't let it get jammed. Don't let it get jammed. She's going to jam her foot in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So vexing. So vexing. My mom would always be like, set yourself up for success. Do it now. Do it but, out. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. That's nice. In and out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. All right. Listen, man. I could talk okay. to you about this uh, all day long, but oh, I won't sure, do man. that to you. Um, 
I uh, one, I appreciate you for coming through. Sure. Anything you want to promote or tell them where you're gonna be Absolutely. or what you're doing? Uh, so on May fourth at seven thirty p.m., I'll be doing my hour at the Bell House. The Bell House, baby. Uh, get there. It's on Seventh Street in uh, Gowanus, Brooklyn. You can look up uh, the showtime and everything like that. Twenty dollars for tickets. Well worth it. Um, yeah. Uh, Bellhouse.com. Yes. So, go yeah. see him. Very, 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 very funny man Come right here. Come see me. Come um, see me. Y'all know what it is, Charles McBee on everything. Thank you so much for coming through, man. I really course, appreciate bro. you, my brother. Pleasure, man. Pleasure. All right. I got to call my mom. <laughs> <laughs> call Katie. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs>